Welcome back to Car Crazy Lancashire. We're here on a lovely sunny day in Blackpool at the TVR headquarters. So let's see what's in store. I was shown round the factory by Ben Samuelson, Head of Marketing and Communications for TVR. Our first stop, the chassis department. Okay, so we started the factory tour and Ben here is going to tell us all about it. Ben, what is the first stage of a TVR? I suppose it's the steel has been cut and bent to shape and length before it comes into here. Yeah. And then it goes onto a jig like this, which precisely locates all the steel tubes. Yeah. And then it's spot and then seam welded yeah. to make up the sort of fourth rail bridge type job that you see, which actually provides all the structure of the car. So you hang the suspension off it as well as you're putting the engine in. And the bodywork itself is really not load bearing. It just sort of sits on top, which is like a racing car, for instance, or like an older car. But that gives us the advantage, because we're building mainly convertibles, of building stiff cars but light cars. Once the chassis is complete, of course, it needs a body or shell, if you prefer. Now, these are all made from fibreglass and have to go through many processing stages before being finished. Baking in the oven and sanded down by hand are just a couple of these procedures. Now, then, it's all a little dusty in here, so if we come from the gluing room, what actually happens in here? Well, as the body comes out of the mould, it's completely shiny and it has joins where the different parts of the mould have been jointed together. So the whole body has to be sanded down and the parts where you've got those edges and those seams have to be filled and sanded and filled and sanded. We get through an awful lot of wet and dry, I can tell you. So that once it's been primed and painted, you can't see anything but a totally flawless surface. Such a unique product, isn't it? OK, then, Ben, let's move on. Now then, man, this department's looking rather sporty, so what's going on here? Yeah, we're in the toy shops, really. Um, this is the racing department. We have our own one-mate race series mm -hmm. with about 40 cars in it, of which we prepare, I suppose, half a dozen here, and we build new cars over the winter to replace the sort of demolition derby ones <laughs> that, that, that disintegrate over the course of the year. Um, they've got 460 brake horsepower, which is as much as anything does on the road, but they only weigh... 840 kilograms, which is less than a metro or something oh. like that. And we've had people like Nigel Mansell in it and Colin McRae, and they all agree it is the most fun form of racing that you can get simply because of how exciting they are to drive and how close it all is. Oh, I can imagine. And of course, for you, that's the perks of the job, isn't it? Well, you know, it's, a, it's development. It's uh, a very serious thing that has to be done, and... Uh, a means of winding up the gaffer. It's... I understand. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, uh, this is very impressive, but shall we see some more roadworthy ones? Yes, of course. OK, off we go. And just as we're about to leave, this huge beast caught the corner of my eye. And it's got no bonnet, but Ben, what is it? This is the only car that makes those outside look weedy. It's got 880 brake horsepower and Ooh. doesn't weigh that much more. It's a Cerberus Speed 12 and is the biggest and the baddest of the lot of them, really. It's, by comparison, the McLaren F1, you know, which was the fastest car in the world, has 250 brake horsepower less and weighs about another two or 300 kilograms. So it's sort of mildly nippy. Ferret down a drain pipe, I suppose, is probably the best way of describing it, but... Then how much does a car like this work? Um, difficult to say with this one, because as the number one race car it represents millions of pounds worth of investment but we will be selling them the next one we build will be a road car for a customer and the customer's paying about 187,000 pounds for it wow. yeah well I know it's quite expensive but just for the noise in itself it's worth it now this car to the left of me just here is at the stage known as Moses's toenails. So it's actually beam primed, but it may still be a little bumpy, but you might not be able to see that with the naked eye. So the next stage, the 
primer is actually sprayed with a black paint and if there are any abrasions or rough surfaces the black paint doesn't actually soak in so it shows so for instance just here there's a little primer drip there and of course the black has congealed around it so that's followed by the next stage those guys over there rub out those black marks get it nice and firm ready for painting Now, as we all know, the TVRs you've seen flying around are usually in the most amazing colours. So, Ben, can any customer have any colour they want? Yeah, we've got 10,000 on our computer, but you can do your own special one-off colour. We had one lady, for instance, who sent up her ski boots, and we matched the colour precisely of her ski boots for her Cerbera. We've managed to find one paint finish that is so extraordinary. It's about four or five different colours, depending on how the light falls on it. But it's about £2,000. Now, do you know what? I've got this really lovely nail varnish at home. You know if I happen to send it in? <laughs> <laughs> that could be difficult. Depends on the colour, though. Yes, we might be able to do it. OK, we're on. <laughs> Right then, so this is the engine build room. How many different types of engine do we have all together? We actually manufacture three of our own engines. This is the straight six. Mm -hmm. um, we've been building these for about 18 months, I suppose. We have a V8 and we also have a V12. Mm -hmm. It is very rare for a company our size to build our own engines. Most people will go out and buy engines from other people or modify other people's engines. Even when McLaren did their car, they had a BMW-based engine. Um, we've been using the Rover engine for a long time before we started doing our own by doing it in the small numbers that we do it in. I mean, we're only building a couple of thousand cars a year. We are able to um, actually afford to build our own. So the chassis is welded, body smoothed off, and all those layers of paint are carefully applied. All it needs now are those finishing touches. You know, the usual, the wheels, dials, heater controls. And let's not forget those plush interiors inside the TVR. And here, there is a huge range of wonderful highs to choose from in beautiful colours. And Ben's just explained to me that TVR only actually use the centre of the hide where the fabric is much softer. So that's it. Voila! After all those special production stages with somewhat familiar names, a finished TVR in your personal colour choice and specification and freshly rolled off the production line. And as you can see, nothing leaves the TVR factory without a right good polish. Just look at that. See your face in that? Hmm. Lovely. I've had a fantastic time here today in Blackpool at TVR. And guess what? I've managed to blank myself a ride.